In this video, I'm gonna talk about a completely overpowered super regen Warlock build. This is similar in some respects to the stasis regen build that I did when Beyond Light came out. You can literally get your supers back in no time flat. This will require some leveling up and a particular exotic because I've tried a couple different ones and this is the one that I really think does the most benefit for you, but this is going to allow you to really be overpowered and to get your super really quickly and also to be able to do a ton of ad clear and have fun in the process. So let's get right into the build. So obviously with Arc 3.0, Stormcaller's changed somewhat, but a lot of it remains the same. So first off, I'm gonna use Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning allows you obviously to chain lightning and also will allow you to jolt enemies and chain a nearby opponent. When you're amplified, you actually get additional chains. And remi reminder, to get amplified, you just have to kill things of arc, and you're gonna be doing a lot of that in this build. And as a reminder, jolt is really something where when you jolt an enemy, it's going to, t it's basically gonna put out arc lightning to nearby opponents. It's also going to be blinded. So it's a really great way to do a lot of ad control. I'm gonna use a pulse grenade. The main reason I'm using this, because it pulses over time, is I'm gonna use Risk Runner later in this build. You can use other things, but this is the most overpowered way I saw to do things. And if you use this, it's going to allow you to proc the abilities of Risk Runner really quickly without any arc damage. If you're in something that does a lot of inbound arc damage, you don't need Risk Runner, but this will allow you to keep generating that super the way we want to in this build. And then Chaos Reach. Obviously, you can use Tickle Fingers if you want. I just think Chaos Reach for a lot of P PvE activity is something you're gonna use for a lot of boss melts, things like that. So it really comes in handy. That's what I'm using. Now let's talk about the new aspects that we have with Arc 3.0. I'm gonna use Lightning Surge. You slide and then blink to bring down lightning to jolt targets. So I'm going to be using that. Electrostatic Mind, defeating enemies with arc or, def or defeating jolted or blinded targets grants you Ionic Traces. Now Ionic Traces are things, for those of you that are not as familiar with Warlock, they come back to you, you kill things, it comes back to you in like a little arc wave and that gives you super energy. So when you generate Ionic Traces, that's gonna allow you to get your super back quicker. For the fragments, what I'm using specifically, and again, there will be some more that will unlock during a season, I'm gonna use Spark of Resistance. So when you're surrounded, you gain resistance. You're gonna be surrounded by a lot of enemies. So gaining resistance, stay in the fight's gonna be good. I'm gonna use Spark of Shock. Spark of Shot allows your grenades to jolt targets. Again, we talked about some of the benefits of jolt, which are really gonna you know, dovetail nicely into this build. I'm gonna use Shock of Discharge. Arc weapon final blows can generate Ionic Trace. Again, I'm gonna be using those, a lot of arc weapons. That'll let you do that too. Again, you're building on that same fantasy. And then Spark of Magnitude, your grenades last longer. So you're getting your grenades, they're jolting targets, which is applying lightning to everything, which is blinding everything. You're also using your arc weapon to develop more ionic traces and you're being resistant. So again, everything kind of dovetails into being kind of that, that person on the fire team that's clearing ads, that's controlling all the ads and is getting their super back to be able to melt bosses. Now let's talk about mods. For the mods for this, I'm gonna use a Harmonic Siphon. This allows you to generate orbs when you get kills with weapons that are the same burn as your subclass. In this case, since you're a storm caller and I'm using Risk Runner a lot, you're gonna get a ton of orbs. I'm mean, just taking charge. Picking up these orbs make you charge of light. So that's gonna start kind of that charge of light build. Then I'm doing stacks on stacks. Stacks on stacks gains an extra stack of charge with light on every stack you gain. Then I get supercharge, which gives you additional two stacks of charge of light with maximum five charged up, which gives you basically an additional stack. So that lets you get up to the five. And then energy converter. When you're charged with light, if you throw your grenade, you don't do anything else, you get up super energy based on how many stacks you have up to 50%. You'll wanna use this early in your process because no matter what you do, you're going to be limited to 50%. So a lot of times when I'm doing my super, I'll uh, if I have my charges, I'll go ahead and do the grenade immediately because that gives me up to 50% of my super energy back almost immediately. Now, one thing to keep in mind before I get into difference makers is in this specific build, this the footage that you've seen, I was getting my super back this quickly with a very low discipline and a very low intellect build. So I could probably get it back quicker if I use something that was a little more heavy handed. But again, I wanted to show you that you don't need the best armor or the best stats to be able to do this. This is really working off the mods and the abilities of Chargers Light and some of the new exotics and again, the new seasonal mods. So again, some of the difference makers in this are lightning strikes twice. This is a mod that's on the seasonal track. Is that you have to get this on, it's on the last rungs. So that means you need to get 15 unlocks to get this. But after you throw a grenade, you gain increased grenade recharge for every period, arc final blows extend this. So again, when you actually throw your grenade, okay, you're gonna get an initial bump. And if you do arc 
kills at final blows, and that can be of anything. That can be of abilities, that can be of your weapons. You're going to extend this. So that's going to allow you to have almost constant grenades, which will be really great for keeping yourself aligned. Remember, those grenades jolt targets, which then extend out the lightning, which then also blind targets. So again, it's just it's something that's great for clearing and protecting the battlefield. I'm going to use Fallen Sunstar. This is a new exotic. You need to go into the Lost Sectors on Legend or Master on Solo to get these. But Ionic Traces you create move faster and grant you additional super energy, which is great, which is what allows some of this build to happen. The other thing is it also gives nearby allies the ability to gain ability energy when you collect Ionic Traces. Now, this is great. The one thing I haven't tested, now you'll see in some of this footage that there's a there's an actual Arc Strider here with me, and he's getting his super fairly quickly because he's getting some of that ability from me. What I haven't tested out is if you had like a bunch of Warlocks running this, how fast you get your supers. Might have to test it out and see what that looks like. But again, that should be pretty overpowered depending on what limits Bungie has put on it. But again, this is a great exotic. I tried doing this also with Mantle Battle Harmony because it has some similar synergy. It just didn't work as great as this. So if you have an opportunity, get this exotic piece of armor when you get a chance. So finally for this build, I'm using Risk Runner. You don't have to use this. Um, you could use something like Trinity Ghoul. You need something that's going to constantly be doing arc damage and it's going to chain as much as possible. So that's why I use Risk Runner. But Risk Runner, when you take arc damage, which again, you can either get that from incoming damage or from the pulse grenade, your weapon becomes super overpowered. What I mean by that is you start basically chaining lightning between enemies. You also, you don't have to reload as often. You also get damage resistance from incoming arc damage. So again, just really great synergy there. There. And then when you get kills, it extends this. So if you're taking incoming arc damage, it works really great, right? If you're not, throw a pulse grenade down. You'll see the counter for your arc conductor. Then just keep killing things. And again, Risk Runner does a great job of this. Any of the arc abilities do that. So again, it's a pretty simple build to put together. It doesn't require end game armor. It will require you if you run this, you do have to get up a little bit on your seasonal pass. You do have to get this exotic. But with this, I was getting basically my super back in a very, very short period of time. And again, with Chaos Reach, that's great because Chaos Reach is great at melting bosses, whether you're trying to take majors down, champions down, or even doing boss damage. So if you're an encounter that has a lot of adds, especially if it has arc damage, but if you have a lot of adds, period, so that you can reproc all these abilities, you could probably get Chaos Reach multiple times during a DPS phase, especially if you have multiple people doing this, dropping orbs, they do their Chaos Reach, and then just feeding on that fantasy. So again, this is a really cool build. Um, I know Warlocks, for a lot of people, it felt like they kind of got nerfed, they weren't that great, and, and generally I agree, they don't have some of the great abilities that the Hunters and, and Titans have in Arc 3.0, but this specific build will give you something, it's niche, but will give you something that will really help out in pretty much any endgame PvE content. That's the video, guys. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.